Today, I'm going to show you how you can create a volumetric light effect using shader graph in Unity. Now, normally you can't see light in midair, but if there's stuff like a little bit of fog or dust or some sort of particles in the air, the light will light those up and it makes really cool, pretty effects. So they're often used to make things in games, such as like magical effects like having god rays coming on to your master sword in the legend of zelda or maybe having a little bit of a light effect coming out of a lamppost in a foggy city at night so first of all you're going to need to go and create a shader unlit graph and call it volumetric so now you got your volumetric shader you want it to be unlit because you don't want to have shadows or shading or anything on it. And then you can right click on that, create, and then create material. And then it will automatically create a material using that shader. So next up, you're going to have to open up your 3D modeling program. I'm going to use Blender for this example. You're just going to want to add a cylinder in Blender Shift A, cylinder. Now you're going to want to not have anything on the top and bottom. So set the cap fill to nothing. And I found for the amount of edges in between, anywhere between eight and 16 is good. Eight will look a little bit low poly on some spots and 16 will look perfectly smooth. And the reason why something as low as like 8 or 16, which is still not perfectly smooth, will look perfectly smooth in this, is you're going to want to fade out the edges, such as here, where you'll n really see it. So if I hit Shade Smooth, it looks pretty smooth still, if you're n not seeing these edges on the bottom. And it even works pretty good with 8, but we'll go with 16. You're going to want to go to UV editing and as you can see Blender automatically set up. You just want to make sure that the top is on the top. So we're good there. Now we'll just hit G, Z, negative one so that we have the top bit right at the origin point to make it easier to rotate around. Now we can scale this. You might want to create multiple of these models with different ratios between the size of these two loops. Of course, you can scale it and make the entire thing skinnier or wider or anything, but you can't change the ratio between these. So maybe you want somewhere it's close to the same and somewhere it's real extreme, somewhere in between. So we'll go with this for now. Now we'll set object, set origin to 3D cursor. And now we can go and hit file, export, FBX. I'll just call it volumetric light shaft or whatever. I'll set it to selected objects and I'll use this experimental apply transform, which will try to fix the rotation of your model because Blender and Unity have different systems for their axes, so it ends up getting rotated. So that'll try to fix it. And then in Unity, we will click on our model. We'll set the material to volumetric material. And then we'll just go and drag it under our spotlight. Since our spotlight is rotated, I will have to rotate it too. And I can just try to scale it to the correct position. Now, as you can see, this is what I was talking about. We need a different ratio for it to match up with our light. So I'll just go in and scale it down some more. And now that's actually pretty good. Now we can go and click on our shader, hit open shader editor. The first thing we'll do is we'll go to the settings, change it to transparent. And I'll add a vector one, which will be opacity will default to about 0.2 drag that in and we will go ahead and put that under alpha now we'll add a color color we'll have a default of white 
255, 255, 255. And we'll drag that color in and put it in our color slot. And then we'll hit save asset. And now you'll see we have the very start of our volumetric light. Now we got a few problems with this shader so far. So first of all, you're probably going to want to fade out the edges where it intersects with geometry. To do that, you hit space, add a node, and you're going to need scene depth. Then you're going to multiply that by your camera and your far plane. So drag that into far plane. And I'll just close both of those, make some more room. And then we subtract close that and then we're going to subtract it from our screen position so screen position and under mode we will use the raw version close that and then we will split and use the alpha now if I put that under our color for example what you'll see is at the top it's very very bright white and it's causing the bloom to go crazy at the bottom, you'll see that where it's intersecting, there's some black. So I can go and add a clamp to make sure that doesn't go any more than one. And I'll just put that into our color. So where it's intersecting, it goes black. Cool. So now instead, we will just multiply that by our opacity. I'll close these two. and put it there in the alpha and put the color in the color now one issue we'll see is that our mesh is actually set to cast shadows so let's turn that off now you can see that it kind of fades out where it intersects our next problem is that if i go and walk into this you'll see that it'll like clip and be ugly when you get close to it we want it to fade into completely transparent so it doesn't do this clipping thing all right, so to do that, we'll make some room. And we will grab a camera node and then drag its position into a distance. And then we're just going to get the distance between this and the position in world space. And what will happen here is it'll be white, but as you get closer, it gets grayer, but it doesn't get completely black. So I'm simply going to subtract the distance by 0.5, and that should make it completely black. And then we will go and clamp this as well. And then we can multiply this by our previous part drag the color back into color and this into the alpha now if we get closer it will fade away instead of clip on us now right now it starts to fade once we get to about one meter away so if you wanted to make that more what you would do is say go here and divide after to subtract by your distance so maybe if you want it to be 10 meters divide by 10 before the clamp. The next issue we have is that we're going to want our light to get weaker as it gets farther away from our light source. So to do that, we're gonna use our UV position that we set up earlier. So I will go and minimize this, make some room, drag these out, and I will grab another multiply node And I will multiply this into the alpha. And what will I multiply it with? That'll be a UV node. And then we will use a split. And we're only going to use the green channel. And as you can see, it get, it's brighter up top and darker at the bottom, which is what we want. So if we save, you see that now it gets a little weaker as it goes down. Next up, we have another problem. 
I think by the edges, it should kind of fade off here instead of being hard. So we fix that. Well, we can use a Fresnel node. Fresnel does, it gives a rim light effect around the edges. Now I'm gonna go start by making a vector one. I'll call this edge fall off. I'm gonna have a default value of say two, and I'm gonna use this for the power in our Fresnel effect, which makes it a little weaker. So I will now clap this, and then I will grab a lerp node, which just fades between A and B based off of your third option, and we will put it in the third. And I will have this be zero to flip it, and I'll have this be their total opacity number. I will actually go ahead and remove the opacity here, and I will place it into the top of our lerp. And now what I'll do is I will, I will go and drag this part into the multiply we had before with the opacity, and I'll save it. And as you can see, it kind of fades off in the edges and gives a kind of like smoky look. So now we got a nice smoky effect here where it gets, uh, where it fades off. And I can of course adjust this with our material settings. So I could adjust the opacity and I can adjust the edge fall off, make it harder or softer. So you might notice with the mesh with this much of a difference between the top and the bottom size that you'll get these harsh lines on the edges. And to fix those, you actually want to add more loops this way with Control R in Blender or whatever. And that'll help clean those up a little bit. So you can export that again. And now it has been improved. And you'll see what it looks like now with the Fresnel effect. Okay, so the final thing I'll show you how to do is we can maybe add a bit of a panning texture going on it. So. We'll take, believe it or not, another multiply node, multiply, and we will plug it into here and into here. Now we will add a time node, and we'll take the time into a multiply, and we're gonna multiply this by a smaller number. We, we can maybe add it as a variable up here, but we will just use 0.02 for the tutorial. And we will bring this into a tiling, an offset node into the offset. And now we'll need a texture sample 2D node. Now again, you can make this texture a material up here with texture and plug it in here, but we will just go ahead and grab our clouds texture here because I'm not gonna use anything else. And I will check this out into the UV output here. Then I'm going to actually duplicate these two. And I'm going to multiply here. And I'm going to change this to 0 0.01. So that way they move at a slightly different rate. And now I can just go and grab one of the channels and do a add. And then I'll add here. This is best with a texture that doesn't have a bunch of different spots. So this is a lower resolution noise texture. If you had a bunch of different black and white areas, it will be very noticeable. So for example, if I made it tile five and it had that many different black and white areas, it won't look good. The other thing is that if you put maybe a different cloud texture in each of the channels, you can use red and green and that'll be a little bit different and that might improve it a little bit too. So now we can just take these added and plug it into the multiply here. And now we should have our final material. As you can see, now we got a bit of a texture going on there. The final thing I might go ahead and add a boolean and I'll call it 
is texture. And then I'll branch off of it. And if true, I will use the bottom, this multiply to use the texture version. And if false, I'll use this one to use the non-textured version. And then I can add it into the alpha here. Maybe make that smaller. And now I will have an option as to which version I can use. So I can go here, turn on use texture. Now it uses the texture, turn it off, and now it doesn't. This was Mr. Tripie, and thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to help my channel grow. Thank you.